It has been uh, long pending and uh, this current government has really got it uh, you know, uh, approved in 2022, December. And uh, it now enables the, uh, the Navy and the maritime uh, security agencies to take proactive action. So definitely it's a big milestone for us. Um, you know, when we uh, started this program, you know, I don't think anyone could have imagined the amount of indigenization that a platform as complicated as this we could have been able to achieve. Absolutely. This is one of the most advanced ISR platform. And this is a watershed moment for India because in terms of Atmanirbhar Bharat, this is a great example of within a short span of time how we can move from zero capability to more than 60% indigenization within the country. Drishti 10. This new set of eyes built for Indian Armed Forces was flagged off by the Naval Chief R. Hari Kumar at Adani Defence and Aerospace Centre located in Hyderabad. Built in the country by Adani Defence and Aerospace, Drishti 10 is a medium altitude, long endurance UAV. The manufacturer claims the state of the art UAV has an endurance of 36 hours and can carry 450 kgs of payload. The UAV is also the only all-weather military platform with STANAC 4671 certification. I would say um, it had been uh, long pending and uh, this current government has really got it uh, you know, uh, approved in 2022, December. And uh, it now enables the, uh, the Navy and the maritime uh, security agencies to take proactive action to, uh, you know, we call it BBS, visit board, search, seize. So we are now empowered by it, and we have decided that we will uh, we will board the uh, board any suspicious dhau, ship, or uh, you know uh, craft, fishing vessel, whatever it is. So far, Adani Defence and Aerospace has exported more than 20 drones to Israel. Mint spoke with Jeet Adani, Vice President of Adani Enterprises, after the flagging off by the Naval Chief. This is going to be the Indian Navy's new pair of eyes uh, yeah. over the oceans. Uh, firstly, I mean, what do you think of this step? Because this is a major step in the direction of making in India. So definitely it's a big milestone for us. Um, you know, when we uh, started this program, you know, I don't think anyone could have imagined the amount of indigenization that a platform as complicated as this we could have been able to achieve. And the fact that we've been able to close this out in 11 months is a testament to the team and the work that they've done on the ground. Um, and it's a very huge, uh, you know, accomplishment. And, um, you know, we're very proud to have the partners and the vendor ecosystem that we have to be able to achieve this. Um, you know, in terms of you know capabilities, this uh, is one of uh, the best-in-class platforms that exists in the world for its uh, category, um, and um, so not just for the Indian Navy but the Indian Army as well. Uh, we're supplying them, uh, and uh, we've already been exporting these UAVs to um, uh, Israel and other countries. And um, you know, it's definitely it's it's very proud to be here and see you know something that we've sort of conceptualized long back actually come to life and be standing and hopefully flying in a bit uh, in front of us. Yeah, it's a beautiful bird. But talk to us for a little bit about the level of indigenization that you have managed to achieve. So, uh, on this platform, we, as of date, we've been able to achieve 80%, uh, a little more than 80% indigenization. And um, uh, only a, a certain uh, IC components which are being imported and sensors which are being imported today. But in terms of value, we have been already uh, able to achieve 80% indigenization on this. All right. And in terms of cost, when compared with other platforms, similar platforms across the world, uh, what kind of benefits this is going to add to uh, as far as the Navy and the Army's uh, defense equipment uh, acquisition is concerned? No, obviously, you know, if you're comparing costs across the world, if you are comparing a self-Indian made Indian design system versus an imported system, it's a factor of the cost. According to Adani Defense and Aerospace CEO Ashish Rajvanshi, the group was contracted by the Ministry of Defense about 10 months ago to supply four medium altitude long endurance or male drones to the Indian Navy and Indian Army. According to him, both the services will get two each of these UAVs in the next few months. Behind me is Indian Navy's most recent purchase, but unlike some of the other purchases of the Navy, this one has been built in India here in Hyderabad and has been built by Adani Defense and Aerospace. To talk about this beautiful bird, I'm joined by the CEO 
Uh, thank you for talking to us, Mr. Rajmanshi. Thank Give you. us a lowdown on what we have behind us, a medium altitude, long endurance UAV built in India. Absolutely. This is one of the most advanced ISR platform. And this is a watershed moment for India because in terms of Atmanirbhar Bharat, this is a great example of within a short span of time how we can move from zero capability to more than 60% indigenization within the country. From structures, electronics, avionics, payloads, and now the final assembly line, we have an indigenous uh, male UAV being done and delivered to Indian Navy. It's a proud moment for us. Right. Wonderful. Congratulations, because you had a small window of about 10 months in which the project was sort of, you know, uh, built up from the ground, from the scratch. So, see, we were awarded this contract in the month of April under emergency procurement. Two birds for Indian Navy and two birds for Indian Army. So, in the last 10 months, uh, we already had the preparation done in the previous five years. Uh, we have been supplying some of these birds to the international market. And we were able to set up this final assembly line within the last eight to 10 months. And today we have a bird uh, which actually can do 10 kilometers altitude, 450 kg payload, uh, SATCOM enabled, uh, de-icing enabled. And it's an all-weather only bird which can fly in a segregated and an unsegregated space. And how does this compare to some of the other UAVs which have been battle tested and have been out there for a while, uh, here on, etc.? See, as I said, three things. One is very advanced payloads. So for a bird, bird is just a flying platform. What ultimately provides you intelligence are the uh, payloads which are being integrated on the bird. So from electro-optic, comment, l and sky eye, this provides a very advanced set of payloads to my Indian customer. The second being SATCOM enabled, there's no limitation of range. You want to do a 100 kilometers mission or you want to do a 4,000 kilometers mission, it's all possible. Third, there's no segregation of civil and defense airspace. This can fly like any other civil plane um, because of Stenac certification, which was not true with any previous bird. Drishti 10 Starliner was built at Adani Defense and Aerospace Health Facility in Hyderabad. Drishti 10 was manufactured in India with 70% indigenous system in a record time of 10 months, although the technology behind the system is from Israel.